Today on the Transplant Hope, I'm going to be sharing with you five fun facts all about me that you'll probably wish you never knew. Stay tuned. Hey folks, welcome to Transplant Helper Today. My name is Jim Merle. Today we're pausing for just a little bit of fun and I'm going to be sharing with you five fun facts about me. You'll probably at the end of this wish you never knew, but I'm going to share them with you anyway. Now, if you've been curious as to why I've been using the number five a lot lately, that's because on May the 23rd, 2018, just a few days from now, I'll be celebrating my fifth year transplant heart anniversary. And I want you to be there to celebrate that with me. So remember on May the 23rd, 2018, I think this is going to fall on a Wednesday. Go ahead and check out the program I put out on that day is that will be my opportunity to celebrate along with you as well as to commemorate my beloved donor's passing and his gift of life that he offered me. But anyway, with that said, let's jump into these five fun facts you never really wanted to know about me. And here they are. Number one, not really that scary for me to say, but I cannot spell, okay? If you've been watching this program very long, you already know that. Basically and notoriously, if I try to put anything up here on the screen, no matter what it is, eventually I'm going to misspell something. And that's not because I don't try. As a matter of fact, I really, really struggle to spell and have all my life to the point that I used to get so frustrated as a kid. You know, when a teacher or a parent or whoever, my mother knew better actually, but teachers would tell me, Jim, if you want to know how to spell a word, get out your dictionary. And that would do me no good because a lot of times I could hardly tell you the first letter, let alone any other letters that we're going in the word so how in the world can i look it up that was always my question now thankfully today i've been helped out a lot because not with spell check but if you'll go into a google search bar on your phone or on your pc whatever and start typing any piece of a word a lot of times it'll go ahead and finish it for you very easily and that's kind of how i have spelled things at least to get by but that still doesn't change the fact that i may do very very poorly when it comes to trans transcribing that from wherever i get the source up onto the screen because i'm probably going to mess it up so if you ever notice anything misspelled please go ahead and tell me about it i'd love to hear it in the comments below um it would help me out a lot at least i'll learn for next time can't change it much once the video's up but i would love to know how to spell words if i miss them so please help me out with that number two you wouldn't necessarily know this but i'm a documentary buff period okay i watch and or most time listen to documentaries all the time i mean day and night when i'm not doing anything more important than that Oftentimes, you'll find me walking around with a, an earbud in my ear. I use the ear pods by Apple, but I walk around with an earbud in my ear and basically, you know, just listening. And I listen to everything in the world, anything documentary-wise, I want to know about it. But particularly, I love to watch things about, say, JFK, about World War II, Pearl Harbor, um, you know, the Titanic is huge. I love to find out new things supposedly about the Titanic. I just love documentaries. And so if you've ever got a great documentary that you'd like to share or you know of one right now, comment below the video, beneath the video and tell me about it. I'd love to hear about it. I'll probably check it out. Uh, I just, I like learning that way. That's the way I like it. So anyway, that's fun fact number two. Fun fact number three and I'm kind of hesitant about this one because you wouldn't know it and you don't have to know it. But anyway, fun fact number three, I always wear an eye mask to sleep. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it on for just a moment. Let me duck beneath the camera and put it on and let you look at it. And you can comment below the video and tell me what you think about it. All right, this is it, folks. This is the uh, eye mask. Hopefully I'm in camera. I can't see, but this is the eye mask I wear almost every single night of my life. I have a terrible problem sleeping to begin with, especially if I have any light coming in the room. I like a room totally dark and cool in order to sleep, and I have to wear this eye mask. And it's usually not a problem around the house. I mean, obviously, my wife, you know, she knows I wear She wears one similar to it, different pattern, but she wears one too. Uh, my family, most of them know about it. But I can remember back when I was in the hospital an awful lot, pre-transplant especially, I needed my mask, but I was afraid to wear it because I was terrified that some nurse or some doctor was going to come in the room in the middle of the night, catch me with it on, and maybe laugh or get a kick out of it. Anyway, that all fell apart when I started wearing it, and even though I'd oftentimes reach and just jerk it off before a nurse came in, it finally fell apart because one of my male nurses, who happened to be a good friend of mine, walked in the room and caught me with it on, and uh, of course he laughed. 
But uh, when I started, started trying to backpedal and cover it up and blame it on everything, he said, hey, don't worry. I have one exactly like that, except he shared with me his had a flower pattern on it. He said that's what his wife could find, and he had to have it in order to sleep. So anyway, you know, if you uh, got a fun fact like that, share it beneath the video. Or tell me if you like this mask or not. I'll tell you a little bit about it real quick. It's called a Bucky. I guess you can still get a Bucky. I'll put a link beneath the video if you can. Uh, but the Bucky mask, even though they're shaped like a woman's bra, and they're very cushiony and uh, stretchy, um, they feel great because they don't touch your eyes. They hold an air pocket off your eyes, and they don't get as hot. So I think it's a great mask. Anyway, if you think I look like an idiot, let me know. Or if you think it's all cool and you like it, give me a thumbs up on the video. That would be absolutely great. That's fun fact number three. A little bit more embarrassing, but that's the way it is. Number four, uh, you may or may not have already seen me comment on this before because I've had a question about this several times. People often ask me, Jim, do you script your videos? And the truth is, no, I don't. I do not script my videos. Uh, someone asked me one day if I use the teleprompter in between me and the camera. No, I don't. I don't read from a teleprompter. I don't script anything. Uh, I pretty much go note-free for the most part. However, I'll show you this. On occasion, I'm going to pull this up on my other camera so you can see it. But on occasion, uh, on a rare occasion, you will find me um, putting a little chart like this beneath my camera. There's my camera. Here's my microphone, a uh, couple of my microphones up ahead, lights to left and right, computer, messy desk, that sort of thing. Let me get off that right quick. But sometimes I will put some things uh, right here uh, just uh, beneath the camera to remind me of what I'm going to say, but I don't really script it. I go off the cuff. Uh, I don't read very well. I mentioned that I don't spell very well. That's I don't read very well. So why script? You know, I'll just mess it up. But nonetheless, I've gotten to where I'm an audible learner. There again, by my documentaries, I listen. And so if I listen to some facts or some, some technical medical thing about a situation, I can often retain a lot of that and then turn around and just spill it back out to you. But anyway, I don't script my videos. That was fun fact number four. Fun fact number five, and I want you to pay very close attention to this one because if you'll go ahead and tell me what fun fact number five is, as well as some details about that. Keyword details, and you'll understand in a moment, I'm going to go ahead and line you up for four different chances, four chances to win one of these great VOG masks. You know, I give away VOG masks all the time. I got a few right here behind me, and I'll give these away very soon. But if you'll give me some information, I'll tell you about it. Anyway, let's just get into it. Fun fact number five, that is, I go by several aliases and or nicknames and have always been that way, okay? When I was a little kid, of course, I was born James. But my parents called me Jim. I don't count that as a nickname necessarily, but I was known as Jim by my family, you know, friends, whoever really knew me, knew me as Jim. But a lot of people called me Jim Bo when I was a kid, and I hated it. You know, my bus driver, which he wasn't very friendly, but my bus driver called me Jim Bo. Sometimes people who were picking on me at school or something called me Jim Bo. Anyway, I was called Jim Bo or Jim Bodie a few different times when I was a kid, and I hated that, but that was a nickname I had. Anyway, when I got past that, my mother started calling me Freddie G. And actually, I call her Mama. I don't know why I call her Mother, but uh, my mama called me Freddie G. And the reasoning behind that was that Fred G. Sanford, off of Sanford and Son, you know, Red Fox played the character, uh, Freddie G. Sanford was a junk dealer. And, and as a kid, I liked to go all around the neighborhood, gather up everybody else's junk, bring it home to mom and daddy's yard, drag it in the yard, and build something out of it. I, I actually learned to build cabinets by doing that in the future. But anyway, mom always called me Freddie G because of the junk I brought home. So that was a second nickname. So Jimbo and Freddie G, as I grew older... I kind of got the nickname of Slim Jim, and that's for good reason. Uh, when I graduated high school, I think I was six foot tall, weighed about 135 or 40 pounds soaking wet, so very skinny, very slim, and people called me Slim Jim. As a matter of fact, one of my good friends in high school um, who couldn't actually say the name Slim called me Shim. And uh, so I was called Shim a lot in school. And, and uh, Shim Murley, he called me. Couldn't say Merle either, but he called me Shim Murley. So Jake, if for whatever reason you end up watching this, Jake, I love you, man. And uh, you can call me anything you want to. And I love the name Shim Murley or Slim Jim was the real name behind that. So if you can remember that, that'll give you a chance to win a bog mask. And then the last one here, this is modern times right now. My wife, my children, my family sometimes call me Fami. 
in the word FOMI, F-O-M-M-Y. Maybe I can put that on the screen and spell it right. The word FOMI uh, basically is a nickname for father mommy. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home dad. I stay at home with my five children, three of them under three years old a lot, at least most of the time. And so they started calling me Fami, and that was an affectionate name. We stole it off some crazy movie we watched one night where they called the guy Fami, but basically I'm a father mommy. <laughs> I feel the shoes of a mommy sometimes, but I'm the father, I'm the daddy. And my wife, she takes wonderful care of us. She works outside the home. She goes to school full time. Uh, she keeps us all straight, healthy, clean, the house clean. You name it, my wife does it. So, Jennifer, I love you for that anyway. But I'm, I'm known as Fami. So much so I even have a car tag on the back of my van that says Fami. And a lot of times people have no clue what that means, but that's what it means. And so that was fun fact number five about me. Now, I would, like I normally say, I would say if this has helped you out in any way, give me a thumbs up. I doubt this has helped you. But if you've had fun today, give me a thumbs up on the video. Maybe even share this video out, video out with some of the other people you know who might want to watch it. And when you share it out, go ahead and tell them you're going to want to find out what his nicknames are at the end so you can enter to win a vlog mask. Anyway, with that said, I'll let you go. This is my five-year anniversary week. I'm actually going to be away uh, the next couple of days getting my heart cath biopsy, all the workup done, that sort of thing. But don't forget on Wednesday, May 23rd, 2018, I will have the episode where I share with you five facts about my transplant process and commemorate and celebrate that great event of a heart transplant anniversary with you together. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, please stay stronger, friends.